Hello folks, Pastor Rocky Branch. Hope you're doing well this morning. Quick question for you. How do you respond to challenging times? Well, you know, the Bible is full of those. I mean, we see so many different uh, instances in the scripture, so many different uh, examples of what people were faced with and what they dealt with and how they responded to it. Now, we have a, a lot of those. One that comes to mind quickly is when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, they had been delivered by the Egyptians. Now, remember this, that the Red Sea closed up on the Egyptians and drowned them. And in fact, the Bible says that their bodies and their chariots washed up on the other side of the Red Sea where the children of Israel were. And they rejoiced. And in fact, they wrote a Psalms. Uh, it's recorded in Exodus 15 about this particular event. It's a great, great story and a great delivery. But three days, only three days went by and they couldn't find any water. And they began to complain how they responded to the victory they had to what they were facing was really not good. In fact, then the Lord provided water for them in the middle of the desert with a great miracle. And he blessed the people again. How do you respond to things and challenges that come into your life? I, I think of one in the New Testament that's always been interesting to me. You know, Judas that denied the Lord. And everybody knows that story for the 30 pieces of silver. When he did this deed, you see, he, uh, according to scripture, when he saw, it's a very important term, when Judas saw that he had betrayed innocent blood, which means, obviously, he recognized he had done the wrong thing. The Bible says he brought the money back to the chief priests and those that had given it to him to betray the Lord. Now, let's look at the time frame for a minute. Let's think about this for a second. The time frame is, is incredible here. At this point in Judas' life, the Bible says he brings this money back and he says, I have betrayed innocent blood and he wanted to give the money back. And the Pharisees, the, uh, the, the leaders, the scribes said, what's that to us? And they bought a graveyard with it. Well, the Bible's very clear that Judas went out and hung himself, committed suicide. Well, at the same period of time, this is when Jesus is arrested because now Judas has recognized his transgression and he recognized that he has betrayed the Lord and Jesus was innocent. So interestingly enough, time period wise, let's think about this for a minute. Time period wise, Jesus is arrested. Prior to Jesus' arrest, they had the upper room experience where he told Judas, whatever you do, do it quickly. And Judas got up and left. The Bible says he went his own way. But Simon Peter was there in the room. And in Luke 22, it records the story that Jesus says to Simon Peter. He says, you know, Simon, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you because the devil desires to have you to sift you as wheat. But when you're converted, strengthen the brethren. And Simon says, no, 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 I'll, I'll hang with you. And Jesus said, you know, before the cock crows three times tonight, you're going you're gonna, to uh, betray me. Well, that happened. Jesus was arrested. Now, have you ever put this together? Jesus was arrested. He was taken into the hall where he would face a kangaroo court. But in the process, think with me now. Judas comes to the garden, kisses Jesus on the cheek. They arrest Jesus. They carry him away. Something happens dramatically in Judas's life. Now listen, think with me. Something dramatically happens in Judas's life. He recognizes suddenly, or at least in this time period, I have betrayed the Son of God. He tries to take the money back. No doubt the Pharisees, Sadducees, the scribes, the Herodians, whoever was meeting to plan this attack against Jesus. Now they've got him in custody. Judas comes in, tries to give the money back. We don't want that. Don't want anything to do. That's blood money. Get him out of here. At that very same time, Jesus is being led from place to place, and Simon Peter is looking afar off, warming himself by the enemy fire. And in three different occasions during that nighttime, he denied the Lord, and the rooster sounded, which would give us a couple of indications. It would give us an indication that it was uh, earlier in the night and it lasted all night for morning was coming, the, the roosters sounding off the morning bell. And Peter lives with this experience. Well, he has to do something also. Uh, the Bible says that Peter went out and wept bitterly. 
and he was strengthened by it. Judas went out and hung himself at the same time period. And Peter went out and wept bitterly, and he became better for it. Judas died because of it. How are you facing things that come into your life? Uh, I know for me, they're difficult. They're hard. I don't want to face them. I don't want to deal with it. But we have to deal with it. And there's two choices. You can isolate your life like Judas did and even end it in some degree and still be walking around. I mean, you can still be walking around and be just as hollow as a jug on the inside. Or you can do like Simon Peter. You can come to the Lord, which gives us strength, confidence, and courage. And even weeping, the Bible says, endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And God will make a way where there seems no way for what you're going through. And because of this traumatic unfolding, and I don't know whether you ever put it together, but it was at the same period of time that these events happened. How important is it for our responses to what God is doing? Now, nobody could see that God was going to work all this out. I mean, we're human. We're looking at Jesus being arrested. We're thinking that, you know, I mean, he, he even being on the cross. I mean, come on. I mean, this doesn't look good, but God worked it out. He worked it out for our glory. Judas died because of his inability to handle things he could not control and his guilt that was overwhelming. Today is a day that you have to deal with issues. Today is a day that you have to make choices. Today is a day that you have to respond to things that are around you. That's very important. So you will have to make the decision today, somewhere along the way, how you're going to deal with things that you cannot control. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He will direct your path. And if you do that, well, God will bless you for it. God bless you. We love you. And goodbye.